Before we go to the message of God, let me introduce to you the God's messenger for tonight. Actually, uh, I met him in CEC annual meeting or council by medical churches in our in uh, last January. And I asked him if it's okay for him to be the speaker in our 25th year anniversary celebration here and in Ruiz. And he told me that it is okay for him. But not in the month of March. Because he said he, he would be out of the country during that period. And since our anniversary date for this year is in the month of April, I messaged him and gave all the details. Then here he is. He traveled for hours from his home to reach here in our place. Actually, he is a member of CNMA Canada or the Christian and Missionary Alliance in Canada. According to my research regarding this Christian group, <laughs> actually, I have no idea regarding this group. I, I check only in their website, in internet. It says there that the Christian and Missionary Alliance is an evangelical Protestant denomination within Christianity. They focus on the pursuit and promotion of the higher Christian life and Evangelical Missionary Alliance focus on mobilizing consecrated Christians in the work of foreign missionary efforts. And our speaker for tonight, he is here in UAE to help and support churches who are asking help or support from them. Sometimes he is in Dubai, sometimes in, he is in al -Ain. And I hope he will include Ruai someday. I pray that uh, someday he will include our church here for uh, their support. His name is Pastor Joel Mar Marquez. Joel Marquez, Pastor Joel Marquez, not Joey Marquez. He traveled from al -Ain to Ruai with his wife, Lole. His wife named Lole to send us the message of God. This is all I know about him, and it is better to call him to introduce himself more. So, charge, prepare yourself to listen to the words of God, and may I call Pastor Joel Marquez to deliver the message of God. Let's clap our hands. <laughs> for the opportunity for inviting me and uh, giving me the opportunity to share to you the word of the Lord today. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Wow, and that's so excited. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad when they tell me we will go to the house of the Lord. So we should have that kind of attitude, especially today, because today, we are celebrating the 25th year anniversary of this church. And again, it's, uh, it's my joy, it's our joy to be part of this great celebration. And thank you, Brother Robert, for uh, the information that you gave about us. And just to let you know more about ourselves, my wife and I were sent here in this country by our, our denomination, the Christian Missionary Alliance, in 2005. So we've been here, this is actually our, our like 10th year. But can you imagine we've been here for 10 years, and, but this is um, our first time to come to Ruiz. <laughs> but again, I thank God for this opportunity. The Lord brought us here to minister to the people of this land. And to the people who need to know that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. <coughs> and God allowed us, gave us opportunity to minister to different churches in, in, all over the UAE. Uh, the church in Dubai, the church in Alain. And now we're helping the church in Abu Dhabi. And God willing, maybe I can help this church as well. Amen. God willing. <laughs> and again, uh, the text that was given to me uh, by Brother Robert is uh, found in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But let's read. Uh, let's start reading in uh, chapter, uh, verse 28. It says here, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth, he will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. 
and this is our text tonight. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Those, but those who hope in the Lord. Let us bow our heads and pray before I continue. Our loving and gracious Heavenly Father, again, thank you. Lord, you have heard all our thanksgiving and praises. Even the testimonies of our brother and our sisters. How you have changed them, how you have loved them for who they are. And thank you even, Lord, for this church, for, for giving this church 25 years. And thank you, Lord, for all the people that you have used. And thank you for the people that are using right now. Even for the opportunity for me to share your word, Lord, again. May you hide me behind the cross of Jesus. So that Jesus alone will be, healed, will be seen, will be heard, will be glorified. Holy Spirit, I cannot do this on my own. That's why I come and ask for your help. Be with me. So this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text tonight, again Isaiah. Isaiah wrote this, this book while they're in the midst of suffering and persecution. They're actually being captured by another nation. So Isaiah started by saying, Do you not know, have you not heard, that the Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He wants us to remind first that no matter what you're facing right now, you have to remember first that we have a powerful God who created the heavens and the earth. Before you even think of your problems, and even in God's original design, when He created Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were supposed to enjoy a good relationship with God, and what God did, He provided all their needs met in the garden. Can you imagine, God told Adam and Eve, you can eat anything in the garden, but there's one restriction. And what is that? Not to eat from the tree of good and evil. That's not so hard, right? You can have anything you want in the garden, except of not eating that fruit. That's easy, right? They even said, somebody joke, jokingly said, you know what, if Adam and Eve, if they're Filipinos, we will not have this problem anymore. Why? Because when the, when the serpent tempted Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, if they're Filipinos, they will eat the snake first. <laughs> Before the apple. But you know what? When the woman saw that the fruit was good, and Adam's prom that Satan's promise is, you will be like God. Can you imagine the temptation? You will be like God. You don't have to, to be controlled or to, you don't have to adhere to anybody else. You, you can be your own God. So what Adam did, what, what he did, took the fruit, ate it, and gave some to her husband. They both said, what happened, you know the story, they were kicked out of the garden. And from that time on, from the time of Adam and Eve until today, man tried to do everything they can on their own to be happy, to be satisfied, and they ran away from God as much as they can. But when problem comes, people say, if God is good, how come I'm having this kind of problem? You know why? Because they keep on go, running away from God. Remember, brothers and sisters, that we have a loving God who wants the best for all of us. We have a powerful God who created us and the whole world. And again, nobody is beyond God's love. You know what? When I saw the picture earlier, when Jesus, it's just a movie, but you can read it in Isaiah. When Jesus was about to be hanged on the cross, did you see those blood? Every time I watch that movie, I just can't help myself but cry. You know why? Because it should be us. It should be us who should be, we are the ones who should be hanged on the cross, not Jesus. He didn't do anything wrong. But what he did, he took the punishments of our sin. He died on the cross. And when he was on the cross, he's thinking of you and me. And that's why I'm so grateful that this church is celebrating 25 years. Meaning, you know what? You have heard the news. You are the reason why Jesus Christ died on the cross. He took the punishment of our sin. 
But the sad part about this, a lot of people are still trying to do what they can do. You know, going back to our text, the first thing that we need to do, the first thing that we should do is to come back to God. You know, I just can't help notice it, but even when the, the worship team are singing, the theme, I, I just look at it, and like the theme is about surrender. You know what? We need to come back to God and surrender to God. And say, Lord, I cannot do it anymore. I cannot do it on my own. I need you. And that is what God wants us to do for us to come back to Him. You know what? God loved us so much that He gave His one and only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves us. He loved us. He gave His one and only begotten Son. He, he died on the cross for you and for me. And to be honest with you, every time God sees the evil that's happening around the world, God is deeply saddened. He's saddened. You know why? Because do you think that I like to see wicked people die, says the Lord, sovereign Lord? Of course not. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. But still, people are trying to stay away from God. Again, some people even try, you know what, not even going back to God. They try to do their best to restore that broken relationship. And yet, it says in Ephesians, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So it's not about religion. It's not about work. It's not about anything that you and I can do. But it is what God did on the cross. And after that, what He's doing is He's giving it as a gift to all of us. A gift with your name on it. With your name on it. Now, it depends whether you would accept it or not. Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. You will be saved. <coughs> if you confess. Now, the question is this. Somebody asked me, but once you have given your life to Jesus, does that mean you will not have any problems anymore? You have heard a brother challenge earlier that you should expect persecution. So of course not. Of course not. Don't expect that you're free from any trials or sufferings. As a matter of fact, somebody told me, Pastor, did you know that when I became a Christian, I had more problems? Why? Because he started to stay away from the bad things he's doing. To him, it's fine, he's struggling. And listen, the only person who does not have problems in this world, who are they? You know who? The people under the ground. Meaning they're dead already. So if you have problems, what is the scripture telling us to do? The Bible is telling us to rejoice. Amen. 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 Rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. The Lord said, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Rejoice. No matter what you are facing. And God said, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Rejoice. Do not be anxious. Do not worry. Be happy. Why? Because you have a big God who is in control. And then He said, The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice. Not because you have a problem. Rejoice. Again, because you have a big God who says nothing is impossible with me. That is why Isaiah started, Do you not know? Do you have you not heard? The God, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Meaning, whatever problem you're facing. Can you imagine the creator of the heavens and the earth is on your side? So you have the right to rejoice. And even in, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all, your, in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That is God's will for you. To rejoice, to be thankful to God. To be thankful to Him. 
And again, our text is after tonight. It says in uh, Isaiah 40, 31, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You know what the meaning? To hope means to have faith in the Lord. To have faith. It is like even when I'm reading some, some commentaries, they say it is like changing clothes. You put on a different cloth that God is giving you. So faith, to have faith, is to have hope in God. And what is faith? You all know what faith is. The Bible defines faith as being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It's being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Do you hear that? To so have faith is to be, to be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I even translated it in Tagalog, it's katiyakan sa mga bagay na inaasahan ang paninindigan sa mga bagay na hindi nakikita. Katiyakan. To be strong in the Lord is to have faith in Him. To renew our strength means to grow stronger. And that is our theme tonight. First, secondly, we must grow stronger or renew our strength in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, physically, in order for us to grow, we must eat, sleep well, and exercise. Right? Eat, sleep well, and exercise. Well, guess what? The same thing is with our Christian walk. We have to eat. We have to relax. We have to sleep well, and then we have to exercise. Eat the Word of God. In Joshua 1.8, it says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then, you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. You want to be prosperous and successful? Amen. Amen. So all you have to do is do what God is saying. And God is saying, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Brothers and sisters, the key is not just to read the Word of God, but to use it, to apply it in our everyday lives. So that we will be careful to do everything that God is telling us. Have you read the Bible? The whole Bible? From Genesis to Revelation? Wow. Everybody's quiet. <laughs> and yet you believe that the Bible is the Word of God. You know what I challenge you? Let me challenge you. Did you know that if you will spend 12 minutes a day, 12 minutes a day reading the Bible, 12 minutes, you will be able to read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation in one year. 12 minutes. Can you give God 12 minutes? Wow. I'm really shocked. <laughs> It's only few people who are willing to give God 12 minutes. <coughs> and yet you can spend hours and hours on Facebook <laughs> or watch a Pegasarian TV. And yet God, you say, Lord, I love you with all my heart. And yet we're not even willing to spend to give Him 12 minutes. Brothers and sisters, I challenge you. Give God 12 minutes. But don't just read it to simply say, because when I challenged one church, this is what they told me when I came back. They said, Pastor, you know what? I did what you told us to do. So I, I read the Bible 12 minutes a day. And I said, so what happened? He said, I was able to read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I said, that's good. Did you learn something? Ah, oh, I thought you just wanted to read it. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the scripture says, meditate on it day and night. What does meditation mean? Meditation means the act of focusing one's thoughts to ponder, think on, and muse. So you're supposed to focus, you're supposed to read it, you're supposed to, to, to ponder on it. Meditation consists of reflective, reflective thinking or contemplation, usually in a specific subject to discern its meaning or significance or an action plan. But listen, that's why people are, they don't want to do this, because meditation requires hard work, commitment, discipline, because it takes time and labor. It takes time and labor. That's why some people, they will even make this as their New Year's resolution. On January 1st, they will read the Bible. January 2, they will read the Bible. 
On January 3, they will read it for 10 minutes. January 4, the more little by little. Why? Because it takes time and commitment. It takes time and commitment. And what is your objective when you're doing a meditation? The objectives of meditation, first, is worship. We don't just worship God on a Friday when we are all together. We worship God even when we are alone in our room. Amen. Worship is this designed to focus on the Lord and His works. It is a place and space in our lives for communion with God. So you worship Him. Don't just worship Him on a Friday. Worship Him every day of your lives. And that is what God is asking us to do. To meditate, to worship Him day and night. To worship Him. Secondly, it's instruction. It is designed to improve our understanding of the Word and God's way as it applies to our lives. Read it. Read it. Read the Scripture. You know, one time I was, when uh, I met Brother Robert, I was telling him about the, the DMM program, Disciple Making Movement. And in the Disciple Making Movement, we're encouraging people to read the Scripture. And we have some questions after you read the passage. One of the questions, or I'll give you several questions, it says here, after you read the passage, you ask yourself, what does this passage tell me about God? What does this passage tell me about God? Or what does this passage tell me about people, about me? And we don't stop there. Then we'll ask, what specific things will I do differently, different, because of this passage? Meaning, brothers and sisters, the Word of God was given to us as an instruction so that we will know what to do. It's like a GPS, a global positioning system, so that it can guide and direct you wherever God wants you to be. Thirdly, it's motivation or encouragement. It is designed to motivate, motivate and inspire us in service and courage for the works God has called us to do. To motivate us, to encourage us. Read the Bible. Even if your, your faith is nangihina yung faith in you, read Hebrews 11. And you will see the life of the people in the past. How they trusted and loved God with all their heart, mind, and soul. Lastly, the objectives of meditation is transformation. It is designed to transform and change our lives. This would apply to all the above. Transformation. God wants to transform us. God wants to change us. God wants to make a new person in us. The, the scripture said, if anyone is, is in Christ, he is the old, he is what? The oldest God that you has come. You're a new person. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, it says, and we, with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Listen, look at that. I underline all reflect the Lord's glory. Listen, brothers and sisters, you and I reflect the Lord's glory. Reflect means when people, when you look at the mirror, what will you see? You will see yourself, right? Now, when God says, you we all reflect God's glory, when people look at us, they should be able to see who? See me? Tall? Dark? <laughs> no. They should be able to see Jesus. And it says here, we are being transformed into His likeness. You know what the word transform? It's actually from the word metamorphosis. When I was in college, I actually don't even take it seriously. But now that I'm preaching, now I'm appreciating it a lot. Because it says transform is metamorphosis. God is transforming us like it's like a butterfly. So it starts from an egg. It will become a caterpillar. From a caterpillar, you know what the caterpillar will do? The caterpillar will eat and eat and eat until he becomes mature. <coughs> and then after the caterpillar becomes mature, it becomes a pupa. And then only then, from the egg to caterpillar, it becomes a beautiful butterfly. And that is what God is doing to you right now. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, it's like 
The word of God was planted in your heart. So you have to grow. In order for you to grow, you have to eat. Not literally eat the food, but eat the word of God. Until you reach the point of maturity. And only then, God, you, you will become what God wants you to be. So that when people look at you, they will not see your old personality, but what they will see is Jesus. 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 Brothers and sisters, the Bible, according to Irving Jensen, he said that the Bible was given to us by God to be read and meditated on. An unread Bible is like food that is refused an unopened love letter, a buried sword, a roadmap not studied, a gold mine not worked. Can you imagine God is giving you something to eat and you don't eat it? It's like a sword. It's like a love letter. People are saying, you know, this is God's love letter to you. I remember when I used to have a girlfriend back in the States, I was still in the Philippines. During our time, every time I receive a love letter from my girlfriend, you know what I'll do? I'll read it once and then keep it away. Take it right? right? Of course not. I will read it over and over and over again. And during my time, I don't know, uh, even I'm seeing time now, really. During our time, uh, we used uh, scented uh, pen and scented paper, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Amen. And then when I receive, I, after I receive a letter from my girlfriend, what I will do, after reading, I'm like, <laughs> Why am I doing that? Because I love her. Amen. So God is giving us the love. God loves us, you, you and me, so much that He gave His one and only begotten Son and has given us His Word to meditate on it. That is why Christians should be excited to read the Word of God. Amen. And that is actually our passion right now. Our passion is to share the Word of God, to, to encourage people to read the Word of the Lord. Just like the psalmist says, the psalmist says in Psalm 119, 103, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. And listen, in Psalm chapter 1, it says here, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and listen, and who meditates his on his law day and night. Again, meditates. And even when you meditate, that person is like a tree planted by a by stream of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Can you imagine? That is the secret of life. Amen. You want to be pros you want to prosper? Yes. You want to be successful in everything you do? Yes. Put God first. Amen. Read this word. Yes. Study it. Worship him. Oh. Lift his name up. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do. Prosper. And in Romans 10, you gotta have faith. And in Romans 10, it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Lumalas po yung faith natin by hearing the word of Christ. And by the way, the goal of meditating God's word, listen, is to internalize and personalize the scripture. So that its truth can affect how we think, how we speak, our attitudes, our actions, and how we live <coughs> as God's children. Ang goal po natin is para maapektuhan that should affect our, our thinking, our speaking, our attitude towards others. Brothers and sisters, we represent Jesus wherever we go, in whatever we do. And I always say this, did you know that Jesus is present at your own workplace? Did you know that? Did you know that? Amen. Why? Because Jesus is in you. So wherever you go, God is there. So we represent Jesus 
wherever we go, whatever we do. And that is what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And how is God glorified? Somebody asked me, Pastor, how can God be glorified in the way I live? And this is, what, this is my answer. So you should reflect God's glory. So when people look at you, and they started to know the goodness of God, God is glorified. Then step by step, little by little, they are getting closer and closer to the point of that they will accept the Lord Jesus Christ, God is glorified. So it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a children of God, if you're a child of God, God is telling you, I can use you. So that people will know that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. But the problem with some Christians, they're not willing to do it. But listen, even in, in uh, we represent Jesus, it says, your life is your message to the world. Make sure it's inspiring. Your life is your message to the world. Make sure it's inspiring. That when people look at you, they will inspire to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. They will say, how come you're different? When your sister came and, and do the testimony, I hope, you know, how come your families are asking you, how come you're different now? And when you said, because I eat the word of God, because I'm a Christian now, did you know that when you said that, God is glorified? So don't be ashamed of being a Christian. Because we represent Jesus wherever we go. Whatever we do. And God is doing that in 2 Corinthians 5.20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making His appeal through us. God is making His appeal so that many more people will come to know that God is good. How I wish that, you know, our next, uh, on our 26th year anniversary, this place will be full of people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because you and I started to be like God, love to be like, like what God wants us to be. Our lives are like an open Bible for others to read and see. Can you imagine some of your co-workers, some of your friends, they don't have their own Bible. But you have a Bible. Do you have a Bible? Yes. Okay. So you have a Bible. You can read your Bible. And listen, sometimes you are the only Bible some unbelievers will ever read. You are the only Bible some unbelievers will ever read because they don't, really have, their, they don't have their own Bible. So this is my challenge to you. To grow stronger. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. And faith that no matter how hard life is, God is with us. No matter what kind of problem you're facing, God is with us. And thirdly, we must grow deeper in love with our Lord. Again, when you're so in love, when I said earlier, you know, I always like, I even smell the, the, the letter of my girlfriend because I love her. So you have, ganun ba excited kayo when it comes to reading His Word? Oh, I heard this. Amen. I heard a small amen. How oh, I wish that all of us will say amen. Amen. I'm that excited to read the word of God every day. You know what? Since we live in this part of the world, dates folks are the staple food of the UAE. And just like rice for Filipinos. But have you noticed how they replant them? When they replant a date tree, this is what I noticed. They bury the tree till 36 inches or 3 feet deep and 42 inches in diameter. When they replant it, the leaves will be covered by sack or a cloth. They will bury it under the ground and then they will wait until they will see fresh green leaves coming out from that sack. When they see that, that's the time, that's a, that's a sign that the tree has already, it's already on the ground. That's how they know. And they said that when it's on the ground, that means no matter how hot our temperature is, no matter whether there's sandstorm or strong winds, that will never take down, that, 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 the winds cannot take the, the, the tree down. And our local friend said, did you know that the hotter the temperature is, the sweeter the date fruit? That is why 
Do you want during summer like right now? It's uh, you can see the the, the it's budding right now. They are hoping that our temperature will will reach 50 degrees Celsius. Now. Now you don't like it, but they like it because you know what? Because the dates will be sweeter and sweeter when the temperature is hotter and hotter. You know what? We should be hot for God. Right? We should be hot for God. And no matter, no matter how hard, when they say hot, no matter what problems or persecution you will face, you will still bear fruit. You will see, the people will be able to see the fruit of the Spirit. The love, the joy, the peace. Pag-ibig, kagalangan, kapayapaan, pagtitsaga, kinagdahang loob, kabutihan, katapatan, kaamuan, at pagpipigil sa sarili. Now, no matter what problems do you face, you still love to talk more about Jesus. Because the more you love Jesus, the more you will talk about Him. Amen. Do you talk about Jesus at work? Amen. Or do you show them the love of Jesus? Some people say, action speaks louder than words. Amen. And my wife earlier during lunch, she, she called it like what, what uh, you know, uh, uh, if you need it, use words. Uh, Francis of Assisi. He mentioned that earlier, and I just remembered that. You know, if necessary, use words. But first and foremost, our lives should, should speak how good, how loving our God is. So therefore, we must grow deeper in love with the Lord. We must grow deeper in the knowledge of our God. We must persevere whatever trials or problems we are facing. And when you're facing problems, recognize them as opportunities to strengthen your faith. Always recognize it that God is a purpose why. Why am I having this problem? Maybe God is telling you something. So recognize it as opportunities to strengthen your faith. And listen to this. If you remain steadfast in these experiences, we will be stronger in our faith and closer to God. Honestly, when you persevere, you will be closer and closer to God. Why? Because no matter what problem you have, listen to this. Remember, brothers and sisters, that our God is bigger and greater than any problem we will face in this world. He's greater and bigger. Again, He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. But the problem with us, when you have a problem, what do you do? You focus on the problem. <coughs> Listen, God is, let's say, this big. And my problem is this small. If I will focus on this problem, what will happen? If I will look and put it closer and closer, closer and closer, what will I see? The background will be blurred. And I will be focusing more on this small bottle of water. And sometimes we're like that. When you have a problem, you think, Pasan mo na big. That's wrong. It's Jesus Christ who's carrying the weight of the whole world. Not you. Because God is good. Because God is good and God is great. And then when he said, you know what, whatever problem you're facing, people said, in Matthew 20, 19, 26, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. <laughs> all things are possible with God. Amen. If you believe. Amen. If you believe. That's why in Isaiah 40 verse 30 it says, Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will soar on wings like eagles. So we should get high with God. Not just high. We should get higher with God. Yes. Amen. Amen? Reach higher. We should get higher with God. Those who hope, wait, or trust in the Lord will soar on wings like eagles. And for your, for your information, Eagles 
fly 10,000 to 15,000 feet high. That's how high they fly. But in order for them to fly, uh, when they build a nest, they will always pick the highest, like the, the highest peak, the highest mountain, or the tallest tree. That's where they have their nest. And the eagle has to take a big leap of the edge of the cliff in order to be able to fly. Meaning, that young eagle should get out of the nest so that he will be able to, so the bird will be able to experience the fly. If the bird, if the eagle decided to stay in that nest, that eagle will not be able to experience flying. And same thing with us. When God said, they will soar on wings like eagles, meaning there are times that we have to get out of your comfort zone. They said that the wings of the eagle represent our faith and belief in God. It represents our faith and belief in God. Because sooner or later, every follower of Jesus Christ will have to make that big decision for their lives to take that big leap of faith, that small step to live, and trust Jesus no matter what the trials we are going through right now. You have to take that step of faith. And let me tell you honestly, this is a confession. I, my favorite verse is Proverbs 3, 5, 6, 3, 5 and 6. Who knows that verse? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean up on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. From young, I grew up in a Christian home. And that's my favorite verse. I just love that verse. But I cannot think actually about that verse. When I'm, when I'm in the Philippines, I have a friend, and my best friend name is Billy. And one time, we have a, a guest missionary who talked about the ministry. And then at the end, he challenged us to give. And you know what my friend did? He took out his wallet and gave all the money that he has. Everything. And this is my problem. I can trust God with almost anything except for money. I just, I can't help it. So when I saw my friend giving all the money he's got, Billy trusted God. And then after that, Sunday, when he went home, he, he, he still had some leftover food, so he ate that. Monday, he still had some bread, so he ate that. Tuesday, there's nothing to eat. Wednesday, there's nothing to eat. What he did, prayed and read the word of God. On Wednesday, he attended the prayer meeting. And then at the prayer meeting, he stood up and thanked God. And I'm like, look at this guy. He hasn't eaten for two days. And he can still stand and thank God. So after the prayer meeting, I invited him to at our place. So he ate. And then after that, I said, Billy, you can take some leftover home. So he took it home. When he arrived home, he saw his brother there. And his brother was like, Billy, how are you doing? And he's like, I'm doing okay. Why are you here? And his brother said, you know what? This morning I was doing my devotion. I'm worshiping God. And while I'm worshiping God, I sense that you need help. So I can. I want to make sure that you're okay. And then Billy said, thank you, but I'm okay. And then Billy asked, have you eaten? And his, friend said, and his brother said, no. So he gave the food that he put on us. He finished it all. So meaning the following day, Billy don't have anything to eat again. But in the morning, he woke up, his brother left because he has to work in Manila. He, and when he woke up, he saw an envelope on top of the table, and there's 500 pesos there. Amen. God is good, right? Amen. And then he left. And then he He was sharing this to us. And everybody was like, yeah, like that. I, I had love too. But you know what? I asked God, how come I don't experience that kind of thing? How come we don't experience it? And then, to make the long story short, I'm studying in the seminary in Canada. We have to pay our electricity bill of $38. $38. We don't have any money at all. And then, what I said, I told my wife, I'll call my parents. So my parents can wire us some money. But then she said, who would you rather call? 
the creator of the heavens and earth, or the one that God created, your parents? Guess what? I said, I'll call my parents. <laughs> Why? It's easier. You know what? When you call, they will answer the phone. Hello, Anna. How are you? Hi, I need some money. So you can get the answer right away. When you call up to God, God will answer you yes, no, or wait. But this time I don't have time to wait. <laughs> so I said, no way. I'm not, I'm not, I can't call my parents. But then my wife challenged me. Why don't we trust God? And you know what? It's so hard for me. And I said, I will trust God. So we prayed. We prayed. And Lord, give us $38. <laughs> I, went to, I went to school. When I saw my friend, a week before I... I that, my friend of that, my, my, my friend... Uh, I went, a week before that, my friend asked me to pray for him because he was having some financial difficulties. But then when I saw him that morning, he shook my hands. And after he shook my hands, I felt there's something inside. And I look at it, and it's fifty dollars. Wow, that is good. I said, I prayed for you last week because you need money. I'm not gonna take this. But he said, Joel, you know what? I'm doing my devotion this morning, and it keeps, keeps coming to my mind. Joel, fifty, and I know you're not fifty years old, so maybe you need fifty dollars. <laughs> deprive me for obeying God. So I don't have a choice but take the money. I paid our bill. Amen. Mr. the Lord. So $38. We supplied $12. Now I have $12. I phoned my wife and said, you know what? Because her favorite is McDonald's French fries. I said, I, I'll take you out. I'll treat you for a big uh, 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 super size. <laughs> Can you imagine what she said? She said, no way. What? No way. Because that money is God's money. That's not your money. You know what? This is how good God is. When you ask for 38, He gives you 50. Meaning, you have $12 extra. And I'm a seminary student. I should know better. But she said, no. I want you to return the money to give me back to God. Sunday morning, with a heavy heart, I opened their passing around the, the plate. And I opened it and said, last call. If I put it in that offering basket, we're back to zero. But then she said, oh, we have God. The God who created the heavens and earth. We have God. So with a heavy heart, I dropped the twelve dollars, and I don't want to look at my wife. I don't really want to talk to her. <laughs> you know what? On our way out of the church, the treasurer called me and gave me an envelope. So I thought it's an invitation. Somebody's having a birthday party. So I'm thinking, oh, we don't have any money to buy for gifts, so we don't need to say no. I gave it to my wife. When she opened it, she was shocked. To open that there's a one thousand dollar check. Wow. <laughs> if I kept the twelve dollars, I will be only be able to buy French fries. And now I have a thousand dollars. I can buy burger and drinks. <laughs> but only when I, you know, this is like God was slapping me on the face. God is like telling me. How dare you call the first trust in the Lord with all your heart and you yourself can't even trust me. So I was, I was saying, but when I gave, you know what, God is good because He provided our need. And you will notice that those people who responded, they responded when they're doing their devotion. Again, they meditated on God's word and prayed. Again, meditation again is what? It's worship, instruction, motivation, encouragement, and transformation. And those who hope on the Lord, this is what God is saying, they will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and grow weary, they will walk and not faint. Meaning, 
if you step of faith, if you think the eagle step out of the nest, meaning did you know that the wings, the feathers, the, at first the, the eagle will not be able to fly 10,000 feet, meaning they have to lose some of the weathers, the feathers. And then when the mature feather grows, then that's the only time they can go higher and higher and higher. And as they go do that, they are facing strong winds. Meaning even in our Christian walk, when you hope on the Lord, you will soar on wings like eagle. But that doesn't mean you're free from any persecutions or problems. But take heart. Because the creator of the heavens and the earth is on your Amen. So whatever you're facing or going through right now, Jesus is telling you and I to come to Him, to surrender to Him. Jesus said, come to me, all who are heavily laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to our loving Creator who can do the impossible. Trust God. When we trust God, when we trust God to do the humanly impossible, He rewards us. He rewards us. But can you imagine, I wasn't even a Christian for a long time. But I'm struggling about trusting God when it comes to finances. But after the breakthrough, you ask me now, I can trust God in anything. I know that God will provide all my needs. Because He provides. Do you believe in God's promises? Amen. You will find God's promises in the Word of God. So I challenge you to read the Bible. And as you read it, you will find many, many promises of the Lord. When God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When God said, I will provide. I will take care of you. But we have to come back to Him. Because how can God take care of you if you're running away from Him? So you have to come back to Him. You have to grow stronger. You have to grow deeper. And get higher with God. And listen, maybe you all know the story of Abraham. When Abraham promised, when God promised Abraham that he would have a son, when God told Abraham, he was about 75 years old, and Sarah was about 65 years old. And God said, You will have a son. And what did Abraham talk? Maybe it's his, uh, uh, but God said, No, your wife will have a child next next year when Sarah heard about it what did she do she laughed and that is why Isaac the meaning of Isaac is laugh okay so Sarah laughed and, and this is what Sarah said will I really have a child now that I am old if God will give me a child he should have done it when I was younger when I still carry it carry a, 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 a child in my tummy. So that's why Sarah was saying, will I really have a child now that I am old? And then God said this, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Brothers and sisters, have you been running away from God from a long time? Have you been running? Come to Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. The question is this, I don't know what you're, you're going through right now. Maybe it's impossible. Maybe you're thinking, this is really, really hard. But God is telling you right now, is there anything too hard for the Lord? The church is celebrating this 25 years. And I believe that God will give this church many, many more years. Amen. Amen. And God is saying, whatever you're facing, don't worry. Be happy. Because I am with you. Amen. And God is saying, is there anything too hard for me? <coughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing is too difficult with God. Amen. Nothing. And then He said, are you tired? Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. Ask God to forgive you from all your sins and accept Jesus into your heart. If you are here this afternoon, and you still haven't, Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been running away from Him. I believe that this is not an accident that you're here. God is telling you to stop running. God is telling you, come to me. Trust me. And I will show you what I can do.
trust Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I love you. I love you. And I will take good care of you. Come back to our powerful creator who wants the best for you and for me. And for us who have been a Christian for a long time, I don't know what you are struggling right now, but you're struggling now. I don't know what I know, but God knows. And you know. But what if God is telling you right now to celebrate your 25th year? God is saying, grow stronger. Grow deeper. Get higher, reach higher for God. Amen. You can do that. If you first, give you come back to God. Secondly, have faith in Him. Thirdly, study the Word, meditate on it. And then lastly, put that step of faith, whatever that is. And this is His promise. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, For your fathers, no father knows what you need before you ask him. Brothers and sisters, that's the word of the Lord. I want you to bow your heads and pray. I will leave in pray. But before I pray, I don't know if there's some of you right now who still haven't accepted the gift that God is giving you. With your eyes closed and head bowed down. If you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart this afternoon tonight, God is saying, telling you, I love you. And I know your struggles. I know what you're going through. I want you to come to me. If you are that kind of person right now in this room, I want you to raise your hands. Is there anybody? Anybody? Thank you. I want you to keep your ha ha hands raised. Keep your hands raised. God loves you. And God has a wonderful plan for you. Anybody else? Before I pray. Anybody else? I don't want to miss this opportunity for you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And as your hands are raised, I want you to stand up. Signifying that, Lord, here I come. I accept you into my heart. I want you to stand, those who are who raise their hands. And repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Forgive me, Lord, from all my sin. Forgive me from running away from you. Forgiveness from running from you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come to my heart. And be my Lord and Savior from this day on. Till I get to heaven. Jesus, in my prayer. And this is my challenge to those who have been a Christian for a long time. But you're struggling just like me. Before I struggled financially. I don't know about you. Maybe you're struggling right now. And Jesus is telling you, come, come to me. If you're that kind of person right now, I want you to raise your hand. Do you have any struggles in life? But you want to deal with God. Because you want to experience. I was only able to experience how good God is when I took that step of faith. And you are here this afternoon. You want to take that step of faith. To those who are raised their hands, I want you to stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Lord, you can see the hearts and minds of those people standing up right now. Thank you because you love them. Thank you because you have a wonderful plan for their lives. Thank you because you are with them. And Lord, signifying Lord that we want you to, to come and be with them, oh Lord. Even when they stood to stand up, speak to them, Lord. Whatever is that thing that they are struggling, in Jesus' name, may they end victorious. May they keep their eyes constantly focused on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. And I pray, oh God, that you will use this church as an encouragement to those brothers and sisters who are standing. 
And again, Lord, I pray and thank, I praise and thank you for blessing this church 25 years. And I pray, I pronounce blessing to this church. And I pray, oh God, that you will bless this church many, 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 many more years. So that many, many more people in Ruiz will know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, I pray from the youngest member of this church to the eldest, I pray that your light so shine in their lives that they will reflect the Lord's glory. Lord, transform them, transform us, change us, and make us the person, the people, the church that you want us to be. For your glory and your honor. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And before I close, to those who don't have a Bible, by the way, our, our passion is to share Bibles. We actually brought some Bibles with us. So we have some uh, 10 Bible, Tagalog Bibles and 5 English Bibles. If you want, if you don't have a Bible, you want one, just come to me on my wife and we will give it to you. Again, the Lord bless you and keep you in the peace and shine upon you. Thank you.